I still remember the first time I saw Sarah. It was at a mutual friend's party and she was wearing a red dress that hugged her clothes in all the right places. I couldn't take away my eyes off her. I was instantly drawn to her infectious smile and sparkling eyes. We struck up a conversation and I quickly realized that we had a lot in common. We had both loved to travel. We both enjoyed hiking and we both had a passion for good food and wine. As the night wore on, we talked and laughed and danced and I knew that I had found someone special. I asked her out on a date and she said, yes, our first date was a walk along at the beach at sunset. We talked about our dreams and aspirations and I found myself opening up to her in a way that I had never done before. We both felt a strong connection and we knew both we wanted to see each other again. From that moment on, we were in. We spent every spare moment together exploring the city and trying out new things. We went on road trips, visited museums, and tried every restaurant in the town. We fell deeper in love with each passing day. As our relationship grew more serious, we talked about our future together. We both wanted to get married and start a family and we knew that we were meant to be together before long. I knew that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with Sarah. I proposed to her on a rooftop terrace overlooking the city and she said, yes, it was a magical moment that we both will never forget. Our wedding was a small intimate affair with just our closest friends and family in attendance. Sarah looked stunning in her white dress and I felt like the luckiest man in the world after the wedding. My wife, Sarah and I were thrilled to begin our lives together. We'd been dating for years and we knew that we wanted to spend the rest of our lives with each other. We bought a beautiful house and we spent every spare moment making it our own. I had just started a new job at a marketing agency while Sarah continued to work as a teacher at a local school. As we settled into our new life, we began planning for the future. We talked about starting a family and dreamed about what our children would be like. We had our ups and downs, but we always worked through them together, relying on each other for support and love. Then one day if we got the news we've been waiting for, Sarah was pregnant. We were overjoyed and could not wait to welcome our child into the world. Nine months later, our son, Jack was born and he was perfect in every way. We were in awe of him and couldn't believe how lucky we were to have him in our lives. We've watched him grow and develop, seeing the world through his eyes and revealing in his happiness. As Jack grew up, we watched him develop a love for soccer. He was a natural athlete and we could see his passion for the game in his every move. He quickly became one of the best players on his team and we were proud of him. That's when we met the coach, his name was Mike and he had a former professional player who had retired from the game and started coaching youth teams. He was a charismatic and charming man who seemed to have a real connection with Jack Mike was passionate about the sport and seemed to have a special talent for bringing out the best in his players. At first, we were thrilled to have an experienced coach working with Jack Mike. Mike seemed to have a real talent for coaching and Jack was improving rapidly under his guidance. But then things started to change. Sarah began spending more and more time with Mike talking to him after practices and games and even inviting him over for dinner. At first, I did not think anything of it. I trusted Sarah completely and I assumed that day we were just talking about Jack's progress and strategies for improving the team. But then I began to notice little things Sarah would come home from a meeting with Mike with a new outfit or a new piece of jewelry. She would be giddy and excited like a schoolgirl with a crush. I tried to ignore it, but the feeling of unease wouldn't go away. Something was wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Then one night, Sarah came home late from dinner with Mike. She was tipsy and giggling and I knew that something was off. I asked her what had happened and she told me the truth. She had slept with Mike. I felt like my world had became upside down. My wife, 
the mother of my child had cheated on me with our son's coach. I didn't know what to do. Sarah tried to explain herself saying that she had done it to help keep Jack selected for the national team. She said that Mike had promised to put in a good word for Jack with the selection committee and that she had done it for the love of our son. But I couldn't accept that. I felt betrayed, angry and hurt. I knew that I had to do something. And that's when I made the decision to go public with the news. I knew that it was a risky move and that it could have a serious consequences for our family. But I felt like I had no other choices. I contacted a local news station and told them what happened. They were interested in the story and they agreed to meet with me and Sarah to hear our side of things. Sarah was hesitant. At first, she begged me not to go public saying that it would ruin our lives and her Jack's chances of getting selected for the national team. But I was determined. I felt like I had to take a stand and show Sarah and everyone else that cheating and lying were not acceptable. Going public with the news was not an easy decision. I knew that it would have consequences both for Sarah and for me. But I also knew that it was the right thing to do. I contacted a journalist that I knew and I told him everything he was shocked, but he agreed to run the story. The article was published a few days later and it caused a sensation. People couldn't believe that a mother would do something like this and the fact that it was to get her son selected for the national team made it even more scandalous. Sarah was devastated by the public attention. She received hate mail and phone calls from people were disgusted by what she had done. She lost her job and she had to go into hiding to avoid the media frenzy. But the story also had an unexpected effect. People started talking about the issue of cheating and infidelity more openly. The media coverage sparked a national conversation about the impact of infidelity on families and relationship. And in the midst of all this, something amazing happened. Jack's soccer coach, the man who Sarah had been having an affair with, came forward and apologized. He admitted that he had taken advantage of Sarah's liability and that he regretted what had happened. It was a turning point for Sarah and for me. We started talking more openly about our feelings and we both realized that we still loved each other. We decided to go to counseling together to work on our relationship and try to rebuild our trust. It wasn't easy. But over time, we started to heal. We talked about what had happened and we learned to communicate more openly and honestly with each other and slowly but surely things started to get better. We started to laugh together again to go on dates and to remember why we fell in love in the first place. Today, several years later, our relationship is stronger than ever. We have a happy and healthy family and we are grateful for each other every day. The incident with Jack. So coach will always be there and a part of our story, but it's no longer longer defines us. We learned from it and we grew from it and we are better people for it. Looking back, I realized that the decision to go public with the news was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But I also knew that it was the right time to do. It forced us to confront the truth. But it ultimately brought us closer together in a way. It's, it's testament to the power of honesty and communication when we are willing to face the truth. When, even when it's painful, we can overcome almost anything. And in the end, that's what makes life worth living as he continued to work in our relationship. There were still months when Sarah and I would struggle with the aftermath of what had happened. We would have conversations about the impact that the incident had on our family and how we could move forward together. One day, Jack came to us with a question he had heard about the incident at school and he was confused and hurt. He wanted to know why his mother had done what she did. Sarah and I sat him down and we explained the situation to him as honestly and openly as we could. We told him that what she did was wrong and that it was a mistake that we both had learned from. We also made sure to reassure him that he'll still be loved and that none of this was his fault. 
We talked to him about the importance of honesty and trust in relationships and we both made a promise to him that we would always be open and honest with each other. It wasn't an easy conversation, but it was an important one. Jack needed to know the truth and we needed to be there for him. As his parents over time, they continued to work in our relationship and we found ways to improve and move forward together. We went to counseling and we talked about our feelings and our fears. We learned how to communicate more effectively and we found new ways to show each other love and support and slowly but surely we started to heal. We found that we could laugh and love again and that our family was stronger than ever looking back on everything had happened. I knew that it was a difficult journey, but I also knew that it was a journey that was worth taking. We learned so much about ourselves and each other and we grew as a family in ways that we never thought possible. Today, Sarah and I are happier than we've ever been. We've learned the value of honesty and trust and we are committed to making our relationship work. We know that we always have challenges to face, but we also know that we have the strength and resilience to overcome them. And in a way, that's the biggest lesson that we've learned from everything that happened no matter what life throws at us. We can always find a way to come out stronger on the other side. We just have to be willing to face the truth and work together as a family to overcome whatever challenges come our way. As our family continued to move forward, we found ourselves facing new challenges and obstacles. But each time we faced a difficult situation, it drew on the lessons that we had learned from our past experiences. One of the biggest challenges that we faced was when Jack was diagnosed with a chronic illness. It was a shock to all of us and it was hard to know how to move forward. But instead of giving up, we came together as a family to support Jack in the way we could. We made sure that he had the best medical care possible and we made sure that he knew about how he loved and supported he was. As we went through this difficult time, I saw how strong and resilient our family had become. We were able to face this challenge head on and we came out the other side even stronger than before. And I know that the big part of that strength came from the lessons that we had learned from our past experience. We learn how to communicate more effectively, how to be honest with each other and how to support each other through difficult times. Today, Jack is doing much better and our family is thriving. We still have our ups and downs and of course, but we know that we can face any challenge together as a family, looking back on everything had happened. I'm grateful for the lessons that we learned as hard as it was to go through the time. I know that it made our family stronger and more resilient. As far as Sarah and me, our relationship is stronger than ever. We've learned how to communicate more effectively how to be honest with each other and how to support each other through anything that life throws our way. I know that there will always be challenges ahead. But I also know that we the strength and resilience to overcome them. And that's the biggest lesson that I've learned from everything that happened. No matter what happens in life, we can always find a way to come out stronger on the other side. As long as we are willing to face the truth and work together as a family.